Hi YouTube, impromptu video. And no, I'm not quite sure about the nude lipstick either, but never mind, we're here. Uh, something interesting happened to me uh, yesterday that's a, uh, a repeat event with my narcissist number one. And it's got me thinking, like I, I do like to do, and I analyze and analyze and I try to compartmentalize it and I try and label it and that way I can deal with it. And I just, it's just struck me, which is why I'm, this is an impromptu video. It's just struck me that I think, particularly covert narcissists, and we know narcissists, people with narcissistic personality disorder, are filled with that childhood rage and fight or flight, which also then can manifest as, as, um, as covert rage and overt rage if it's an overt narcissist, that they they obviously always have it in them, okay? Because they don't do the self-development work and the personal work and they don't have the self-awareness to, to try and expel it um, through counselling or uh, self-development or writing um, or, or simply just by trying to deal with it because they don't want to change. So they're always going to have that rage, yeah? And with the covert narcissists, they don't know it, right? Because they're not self-aware. Yeah, they're super manipulative. Yeah, they're super intelligent in terms of manipulation, um, and yeah, they're very good at just being, you know, paddling below the surface and um, appearing totally calm on the outside. Yeah, that's covert narcissists off the bat, but they are just as angry and wounded and vengeful and bitter as the overt narcissist who gets drunk and chucks things around and hits his wife or hits her husband, um, who will cheat and cheat and cheat and porn and porn and porn and masturbate. You know, that, that's the overt extreme ways to, to expel, deal with and enjoy their rage. And then you've got your covert narcissist who have to also adapt and change. And it struck me, the narcissist, my narcissist number one, who is the covert Machiavellian narcissist, it struck me that he obviously has his rage and he has to adapt how he expels that rage towards me and anyone um, who, who he sees as slighting him, who he sees as the bad guy and wrong and deserving of his bile and spite. He has to change that because, of course, he got caught. He got caught doing his favourite way to expel the rage and the spite, which was screaming and shouting at me. Um, over the phone after I dumped him for narcissist number two. Thumbs up for that choice there, Lucy. Um, but he, so he had, he, he, he was stopped, he was prevented because I finally recorded him and I finally reported him to police. And of course, from that, from that, from the moment at which he was released from court after paying his fine for that domestic telecommunications offence, um, he made a conscious decision to never, ever, speak to me in face to face or on the phone again because one thing he does have is self-awareness around his rage he knows he can't handle his rage he knows if we had a phone conversation he would go nuts and become a complete psycho again and you can't get to domestic telecommunications okay especially if you're a guy they come down on you like a ton of bricks so he's he's put in place his boundary which is never to speak to me again okay which is very difficult when you're co-parenting uh, but he doesn't care about that because co-parenting is not his, you know, his, uh, it's not important. What's important is him not getting caught abusing me again. Um, so he's changed how he expels his rage. And this is the thing that just struck me just then. So what he started doing now is he's, he expels his rage through the classic uh, gaslighting um, and through the classic reputational damage. Um, but he has now started drawing our child into it with absolutely no care or maybe even awareness of what he's doing to our child. So his way of being bitter and angry and, and, and uh, vengeful towards me is to create these false narratives now because he's not allowed to scream and shout at me anymore. He never was in the first place, but I let him do it because I felt guilty about leaving him for a narcissist um, number two. But of course, I found out recently that I shouldn't have felt guilty because my narcissist number one had a nine-month affair with somebody called, uh, oh, I'm not going to say her name, but she wouldn't mind if I did, but I'm not going to. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't actually deserve, deserve the spite in the bile that I was getting, you know, vocally from him. Um, but I took it because I thought I did. That's the empath in me. You know, we think we deserve to be punch bags to help other people feel better. Um, so I've prevented that. So he's had to try and find a new outlet, okay? And his new outlet for the rage now is this, these lies and this false narrative. 
And he started doing this thing where he creates a situation where I look like the bad guy and, he, and he's skilled at this. He creates it from nowhere. Like, it's not like I even do anything that he can maybe exaggerate, you know? there's It's from nowhere. So he's created situations where he's saying, I'm not in my house um, when he's dropping our son off. That's just from nowhere. That's not half a lie. That's not an exaggeration. And we know narcissists love doing all that as well. That's a pure, big, fat lie. But he does it while my child is in the car. So he's escalated. His lack of um, care for our son and our son's feelings now is not as relevant and not as important as making me the enemy and being in a position to go home to his new wife, his new supply and his mother and say, Lucy wasn't in. Lucy did. Lucy's a terrible mother. She wasn't in. I bet she was out drinking and partying and with some new guy. This whole new story, whole narrative he'll create. And they'll, to both women, will nod, right? And, and narcissist number one will have this absolute surge of power and joy that yet again, and in his warped little mind, I am the bad guy. It's irrelevant that I was sat in my house waiting for my son having bought my son's, one of my son's favorite dinners, although to be fair, all the ones I cook are his favorite. Uh, so that doesn't matter. He's, he's actually sat in his car. This is the second time he's done it. He actually sat in his car outside my house with my wee boy getting more and more anxious because my wee boy has uh, Asperger's. Um, more and more anxious. He's not phoned. He's not texted. He's not emailed. And he says that none of the buzzers were working, but there's seven properties in my building. And they've managed to work the other 2,000 times he's dropped my son off. Uh, funny how they didn't work yesterday, um, when he's also been caught out breaching the child contact order and refusing to have his son for the second week of the holidays that he insisted he have him. Uh, so what we've got here is we've also got a reaction to being caught out. So the timing of this rage, this covert rage, of him sitting and seething in that car, knowing I was sat upstairs waiting for my wee boy, the timing is also very interesting with this type of narcissistic uh, rage uh, from a covert narcissist because he he knows he's up by not having uh, our son for this second week of the holidays. Initially, he, he, he when he took me to court, he wanted to have my son for three weeks of the six-week school holidays. I won that and said, no, you can have two weeks. He then decided that uh, he was busy on the week that he always has and has had for the last seven years in a row, uh, busy being self-employed how can you be busy and self-employed in the same week that you've had your son for seven years like did you not plan no he didn't want to plan didn't care that that's letting my little boy down because it's actually ultimately caused disruption to me so he's escalated because his son now is no longer as important as his hatred of me and that is a classic covert narcissist they escalate they escalate so because he's not an overt where he can just go and get drunk and hill chairs about or get arrested like my narcissist number two or go and uh, masturbate excessively and cheat and cheat and cheat with like nine people at once because he's not because he's not an overt narcissist he's a covert he has to use very special very discreet very manipulative techniques to expel the rage okay so this manipulation now of, of the child contact is is it but because he got caught out making a mistake by messing up with this second week and again even though I offered three different weeks that actually I shouldn't have had to do um, he kept saying he was busy too busy too busy uh, I think he's, he's clicked the penny's dropped and he's thought oh I've messed up there she's kind of won she's in his head in his head I've won a battle within the war there because he's messed up right so he's thought he's conscious, subconsciously what can I do to mess her up I know what I'll do I'll just basically not drop my wee boy home I'll just basically, I'll say that she's messed up and she's not in the house and she's out drinking and partying and she's not there for my wee boy. Yeah, because what that'll do is that'll equalize the balance. Because if I can fake her messing up, I haven't messed up and it helps me and it fixes things. That's a covert narcissist. That's how they think. That's the thought processes. It's deflection and projection. He's a crappy parent at the moment, so he's tried to make me one. So there you go. Narcissistic rage from a covert narcissist will always increase they will always adapt there will be vast amounts of manipulation deflection projection and reputational damage in there and they will chameleon like change how they harm and hurt you your coverts they've moved on years ago 
you know, they've moved on. They've created another six victims like you, yeah? They, they've got booze, sex, porn, drugs, maybe even gambling to get out all that stuff. See, covert narcissists, they are more dangerous. They are more dangerous. And that's why we need to watch videos like this uh, to keep one step ahead of them. If you're interested in a little bit more about narcissist number one and narcissist number two, please do buy uh, my first book, Dangerous Normal People by Elder W. Hawksby and review it. Uh, and I've also written a further two books, The Forgivers Club and The Notch, both by Elder W. Hawksby. If you fancy slightly different uh, viewpoints on narcissists and the abuse that they put us through.